Welcome to GeoInteresting, presented by the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Today on the podcast, we have Sue Shoemate, NGA's Talent Acquisition Lead. Sue's here to help demystify some of the intelligence community recruiting process and tell you a little bit more about some of the jobs we're currently hiring for. Sue, thanks for being here on the Geo Interesting podcast today. This fall, NGA has some pretty cool hiring initiatives going on, and we wanted you to come in here today and just kind of talk about them for our audience and for our potential applicants. Uh, so first up, we've got intern recruiting season. Can you tell me a little bit about what NGA is looking for in their potential interns? Absolutely, and it's just a pleasure to be able to talk to you about these recruiting initiatives that we're undertaking. So our student intern program, to start off with, to let you know, we are opening the application period through October 10th, and individuals who might be interested can check out our website at www.nga.mil. And what they'll find that we're looking for in the students that we're going to be selecting for our internship program in 2016 we're looking for individuals who are U.S. citizens, who are 18 years of age or older, enrolled in an undergraduate degree program, and maintain an overall GPA of 3.0 on a 4.0 scale, and finally can commit to a 10-week period of time during the summer when they can work for NGA in the capacity of an intern uh, internship. So then the question becomes, what are we looking for? What kinds of people and what kinds of skills NGA is a very broad organization, and we um, not only have our uh, skills that relate to the mission, we also have a whole host of skills and competencies we look for in students who might be able to bring specialties in uh, anywhere from um, human development to um, contracting and finance office, as well as those skill sets that are in the GeoAnt world, which would be more um, imagery analysts, intelligence analysts, um, all of our scientific work roles, and all the way through even in some of our um, securities kinds of work roles. So uh, we're looking for a variety of individuals to come in, but with a specific area in the technical, in the geo, geoint, geoint or geospatial area, as well as more of those support areas will be the three kind of flavors we're looking for. Basically, you're saying NGA takes all kinds. I, I could be a music major, an English major, and there, there might be a really interesting role for me at the agency. That's correct. If uh, What we look for, in addition to some of this, the technical expertise, uh, with that and beyond that for our entry-level hires, we really are interested in people who have great critical thinking skills, those individuals who have the ability to communicate well, um, do really conduct the research that we need our organization to do, and you find those skill sets in a variety of majors. History majors are really good at looking back at the past and trying to analyze um, what that history means in the context of who is communicating it. Those are the same types of things that we might be doing in some of our work roles, where we're trying to understand context, and we're trying to identify individuals who can use their critical thinking skills to be able to uh, understand in an unbiased way the information that they're uh, researching. So if I'm an intern and I submit my application by the October 10th deadline, what should I expect next? Next step would be in, inside of NGA, we will have our hiring managers start looking at the applicants to determine who we are going to interview if we decide to do an interview or who we're going to decide to select. This year, we're not requiring interviews, uh, but some of our hiring managers may choose to do an interview in that process. Uh, we will, by the end of the year, uh, so closing October 10th, so by the end of the year, our expectation will be that our hiring managers will have had the opportunity to look at all of the applicants and then to make some decision on who they want to extend offers to. So in terms of your question, what could they expect? They would submit the application and then there would be a period of time they would have contact from a hiring manager or from our student um, 
programs team who would be contacting them to extend an offer to them based on what they submitted. But our goal is to have this all wrapped up by the end of the year because the students will have to then undertake the security clearance process. And so that would be the next step that the student would have. But the ultimate goal of uh, submitting the offer to the student having them go through the process, and then by May to June of fiscal year 16, uh, we would have those individuals coming on board to work that 10-week period with us. And I think the most important question, these are paid internships, right? Absolutely. They are paid internships, which is very exciting. Individuals who are selected for our opportunities not only get paid, they, uh, as I mentioned earlier, they are um, put through the security clearance process, so they will have that um, level of security when they come to work for us um, it's, and they can expect meaningful work. This is not work for an intern to come in and do uh, administrative support type of work. Um, not that that would be a problem to learn that in our agency, but we really want them to do work that's meaningful in the area they're chosen to do. For example, if they're um, selected to work in uh, one of our mission critical areas, they will be actually doing work that's related to that work role that they're hired into. If they're hired as a, uh, a human development specialist, they may be working in my team or they may be working in our policy. There's a variety of places that we could place them. So it's a relevant experience added on top of the beauty of being able to go through the security clearance process and have that um, um, uh, have achieved that um, clearance as well as then getting paid to do the work. So pivoting just a little bit from interns, we're also, the agency is also undergoing right now a pretty big hiring push around some interesting work roles that maybe people don't necessarily associate with uh, geospatial intelligence. Can you talk a little bit about those work roles and, and what the agency is looking for for some career options? Definitely. Um, when What we're looking for, we have uh, several things that I can provide you. The first is that we're having a hiring event on November 4th. And that event is only open to individuals who've been selected for an interview. So people who have gone out to our website and made application will be screened at the end of September and early October, and we will be making some decisions about the individuals that will be selected to come in for an interview here in our building in Springfield, Virginia on, uh, in October. Those types of work roles we're specifically looking for at that event are IAs and GAs, the imagery and geospatial analyst, which is pretty, um, those positions are part of the core of the NGA, what we do as an agency. But second to that, we're also looking for folks with some cyber experience as in our office, our technology area, and we're looking for systems engineers. Now, those are exclusive for the event, but we also have a, a variety of other openings that are out there right now. We're looking for police officers. We're looking for attorneys. We're looking for accountants, finance people. We're looking for um, individuals who have contracts background, and we're looking for aero analysts, maritime analysts, geodetic surveyors. So you can see the list of what we're looking for is pretty vast and pretty large. Uh, we, uh, we have really great information on our website about those occupations that, that people can tap into. So they can learn more about the occupation and they can learn more about um, what we would expect when we hire somebody in those areas. So. Again, I'm looking for a job. I see something that I really like on NGA's career site, and I apply for it. What happens next in, in that process? How does it differ from the internship process? So on the website, when um, applicant goes there, they will see two different things that are really important. They'll see an announcement that has an AON code next to it, and they'll see an announcement that has an open and continuous statement. And what is an AON? So an AON is an, an announcement opportunity notice versus the open and continuous. 
And so an announcement opportunity notice, or the AON, is open only for a two-week cycle. We do post all of our announcements every Monday, so we always encourage applicants, if you don't see something today, come back next week. We don't have an RSS feed to drive them the, the information to the applicant, so we encourage the applicant to, co to come back every Monday and check what we have on our website. The AONs close in a two-week cycle, and then those those applicants will be reviewed by our team of recruiters to determine those individuals who have met the mandatory qualifications and part of the desirable qualifications we have in the announcement and then they're sent forward to a hiring manager. The difference between the AON and the open and continuous is that in the open and continuous applicants, uh, we're looking for applicants maybe in the near future or maybe over the course of several months to come. So we're trying to put those openings out so that when we're visiting colleges and universities and professional organizations, we can speak to the openings that we expect to have in the near future and applicants can start applying now. Uh, so the difference is, as I've stated, is an AON closes in two weeks, an open and continuous will be longer, and we may have a longer point in time before we're ready to make a hire for that work role. Now, does every resume that gets submitted against a job opening get reviewed by a person at NGA? Absolutely. We have, um, when, an when we have applicants who apply and my team starts making the review, we will go through all of the applications and look at them individually. And what we're specifically looking for is, number one, did the applicant were they able to ensure they've met all the mandatory qualifications and sometimes we look also for the desirable qualifications. Our um, list is, is um, sort of, or our, our focus is very much on whether or not that applicant is able to demonstrate in their resume and cover letter that they've met those requirements. And so that's what those individuals who are looking at each one of those applications will be looking for. When they leave my team, once my team has made an assessment to determine if the person has met those mandatory qualifications, then they would be forwarded to the hiring panel where the subject matter experts are going to look in more depth for um, who they want to interview. Now, uh, uh, sort of a segue, uh, into a discussion about the mandatory qualifications, uh, what I always tell applicants is you can't have four out of the five or four out of the six if there are six mandatory. You have to have all of them and they have to be very concrete. We have to be able to see them in the resume or the cover letter. Uh, can't We don't Im infer that they're there just because you might have worked in a similar job. We have to actually see they're written in that you've met those. So that's a, a very important key to an applicant to be able to demonstrate they have those skills. Talk to me a little bit about the cover letter. How important is that in your decision-making process? I believe very strongly in the cover letter. In It's my belief that a cover letter is like a uh, this beautiful white space. It's almost like a painter just leaving this, this uh, blank canvas. An applicant who has this opportunity to demonstrate how they are the best qualified applicant for the job and ignores the cover letter is ignoring this beautiful opportunity they have to let the recruiter and the hiring manager know why they're the best qualified for the job. So uh, it's not mandatory. People can choose not to do it. But I I'm strongly believe that by using that that space to create your story and explain why you're applying to NGA, how you've met the mandatory qualifications, and then to really be able to um, speak to why what you want to contribute to our organization. That's also key. So some of these positions that are out there now, they are junior, more junior positions, and you're kind of looking for some of those recent college graduates. When should those people be applying to jobs? I'm a senior in college. I'm considering a career at NGA. I see a, a position that's open. When should I be applying and sending my resume in to get through the clearance process? 
That's a really good question. And, and the reason I say it's a really good question because it's a piece that many times our applicants miss. Many times we see um, college students who have just graduated who are now looking for uh, jobs. And as we've just described, part of our hiring process for the student intern is equal to the hiring process for anyone coming into a job. There is a process to go through. Um, the top secret security clearance process can take a, a, a uh, anywhere from five to six months or longer to come through that process. So we are we highly encourage those first semester seniors or those seniors who will be graduating this fall to start the application process now. It's just a perfect time to apply for jobs because by the time if you are interviewed and you're offered the job, you complete your paperwork and then go through the security process itself, it's going to be time for graduation. It's going to be time for you to come on board. So um, going a second piece to that question is about the internships also. Uh, overarching, when is the best time for college students to apply? We Our internship is open for undergraduate, graduate, PhD students. Um, we always encourage them to apply early because generally at the undergraduate level the best time is the freshman or sophomore in college to start that application process because that individual has to be in school after their internship they have to have at least one semester beyond the internship that they're going to be uh, in school and the same holds true for those people applying for our jobs many times as I said earlier by the time we get an applicant to apply They've already graduated and they're needing jobs today and they don't have the luxury of time to wait. So to make the stars and the moon, everything align, we really recommend um, for college students it's a really good time to start when they're in their senior year. What's the key takeaway that you want someone applying to NGA to, to take from this podcast? What kind of people are we looking for here? I, I think we are looking for a breadth of skills and experience and what the key takeaway to two key takeaways if I might. Uh, one would be you, even if you don't think that your skills align to NGA, take a look at our jobs and look at the description of our jobs. You might be surprised at what opportunities might be available you not might not have thought of. That would be the first. And the second, when you do get ready to apply, make sure you apply early. Don't wait till the last minute and make sure you meet the mandatory qualifications Make sure they're clear in the application or cover letter. Sue, thank you so much for joining us today. I think that a lot of people interested in a career at NGA might have some additional questions after listening to this podcast. Would you uh, be interested in coming back at a later date and maybe answering some of those questions for us? Absolutely. I think it's a really great idea, and I'm more than happy to come back and answer questions that we haven't covered today that would help uh, applicants to um, successfully apply for our jobs. Absolutely. I'll be happy to. If you have a recruiting question that Sue didn't cover today, please feel free to send it to us via Twitter at NGA underscore GeoEnt or email it to us at publicaffairs at NGA dot M-I-L. For more information about NGA careers, please visit www.nga.mil careers. GeoInteresting is produced by the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency's Office of Corporate Communications. Never miss an episode of GeoInteresting by subscribing on iTunes or SoundCloud. For more information about NGA, visit us at www.nga.mil Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Thanks for listening.